This is Iceman John Bailey. Welcome back to another Iceman series segment. In this video, I want to talk about my new V331. I want to do a review on it. And I'm going to touch on a few things. Okay, this bow, for starters, it's incredible. For the riser be, to be so long and uh, over parallel, it's like slightly over parallel limbs. And if you look at it in the beginning, it, it's, it reminds me of the Bear Carnage. I had a Bear Carnage back in 2010. And they had the, uh, the limbs, they were like over parallel, uh, uh, over parallel design. And that's what that reminds me of. But looking at the overall finish is great. And I don't see any flaws on that because all of the Matthews bows I've ever had, I've never had any issues with peeling. And the riser, it, the cutout is a little bit different on the riser, but it's, it, it's, it's just great. And it, it looks really rigid. And uh, it looks a little smaller up top here and on the bottom than on my, uh, my VXR. I had the, uh, the 31, the VXR 31.5 and the 28, and looking at uh, the bow versus on the 31.5, the VXR, it's uh, not that much different, and looks like the, uh, the stabilizer has gotten a little smaller. This is a Nano 740. I don't have my readers on, I believe it's a Nano 740. And once again, I'm going with uh, my Tetra, HHA uh, Tetra site here, which is phenomenal site from my brother in Christ, Chris Ham. Uh, thank, uh, special thanks to him and uh, HHA Sports. And like I said, this, this site here, I cannot get rid of this one site. It's the, uh, like I said, that's the Tetra, HHA Tetra. And I had this on my VXR 28 and I could not get rid of it. So I decided to actually transfer the site to, uh, to this particular bow. But getting back to uh, the bow here, the over parallel limb, it, it, it's, it's really neat. It's really neat looking. And I never thought that with my VXR, uh, going, I should have should said, let me back up. Going back to my Vertex, uh, I'm going to back up even further. Going back to my Haline 6. When I first shot the Haline 6, I was like, man, this is incredible. And I took it to Africa, and like I said, with my Haline 6, okay, just imagine when you're at full draw with an Impala. They said the Impala was the most spookiest, one of the most spookiest games in the world to uh, hunt. So I'm at full draw on this Impala, and I'm really intimidated because... Before then, I wasn't really worried about a stabilizer, but I'm thinking, okay, if I'm going to uh, thread the needle on an Impala, I need to use a stabilizer so the bow tilt forward a little bit when I hit that release. And as soon as I hit the release, he didn't even duck until the arrow got just about to him. And I was like blown away because from the Haline 6 to this uh, V331, there's no comparison in sound because when I shoot uh, this bow here, this uh, V331 at the target, I barely, I don't even really hear the bow. I hear my release and I hear the uh, arrow hitting the target. And it's a real faint sound coming from this bow. So that's one reason why, like I said, I stick with Matthews is because when you really want an ultimate hunting bow, buy a bow off the shelf that's quiet, almost whisper quiet, without putting anything on it. That's a no-brainer to me. And I chronoed this bow when I, I picked up this bow Thursday. I chronoed the bow at 316, 316 feet per second. Uh, Anthony at uh, Gable Sporting Goods, he can he can justify that because some guys might don't they might not think that this bow is shooting that fast. But if you want to call up the Gable Sporting Goods in uh, Douglasville, Georgia, ask for Anthony. He can he can uh, justify that this actual bow shot at 316 feet per second. And I'm using the uh, Maxima Red again. I've shot this arrow 
and my Halon 6 Triax uh, Verdix uh, VXR and now this V3 the same exact arrow and it's at uh, 28 inches it's uh, 393.5 grain and like I said I took this to Africa some guys might think it's too light but I took it to Africa I shot a Kudu uh, Bless Buck, two Impalas Warthog and a Wildebeest with a 393 grain arrow it's, it's all about shot placement I'm not about trying to shoot a deer square on the shoulder or animal square on the shoulder because that's really not what an arrow is made for not unless you shoot up to a 500 some grain 600 some grain arrow then you do you then then that's 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 doable but when you got an arrow 400 450 uh, just just shoot hard long uh, to to actually uh, down that arrow, that animal it's not about breaking the animal down it's about getting a humane shot okay um, okay getting back to this bow the finish is excellent and like I said, they still have these uh, cross entry cams, and they have that uh, what is that thing called? The Silas uh, Connect system, which is I don't care to have it on this boat because I don't want to add any weight, uh, more weight. I am going to add a little bit more weight. I'm going to talk about that in a minute uh, in another area of this boat. But like I said, uh, I'm using a fuse stabilizer, uh, the six inch fuse stabilizer on here, and. Um, Going to the actual roller guard, which as they changed this year, is the uh, center shot roller guard, which is it's in line. It's in line with your arrow. That's pretty cool, uh, and that, that that gives you see how see how that that's in line with the arrow. That gives you uh, 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 not only a, st a, st a stable shot, but it actually helps to keep your cams in sync and and also it, it helps your bow makes your bow a little quieter but I think um, looking at looking at the way these limbs are these limbs if you look at them they're not they're not as thick as the uh, the VXR so the VXR limbs were thicker than these limbs and by these limbs being thinner and a little bit over parallel I think that's another reason why this bow is quieter than the VXR it's it's not it's it's not uh, ver it's not a lot quieter than the VXR or a lot quieter than the Vertex but it's a little bit quieter but it's it's incredible on how this bow shoots because looking at this thing it looks really long but it's really not a long bow it's just a long riser but if the if the actual limbs are tilted up more because of the way the riser was built then it could be easily a 34 or 32 uh, inch axle to axle bow but you still have your 6 inch brace height on this bow and like I said it's, it's, it's phenomenal I shot the 27 and the 27 is not for me because the actual uh, the draw cycle the draw curve, draw cycle curve, it's just it's not it's not where I want it to be. But by me being a 29 inch draw, when you draw this bow back, it's nice. The draw curve cycle is nice and even for me, and it doesn't look like uh, I'm trying to just overextend myself or, uh, or 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 anything like that. But when I'm drawing the 27 inch uh, the V the V327. It just looks like the bow's not in tune. It looks like the one cam, uh, the top or the bottom cam is off, out of sync, because of the way the curve is, the uh, draw cycle curve. It just don't look right to me. So that's why I went with the 31. But uh, one thing I want to add uh, to the bow here is I may end up putting a uh, uh, what you call that thing a dual a dual stabilizer system on here where I can put a back stabilizer on here so I might just get the CBE I think it's a CBE setup put like an 11 inch on front and a 7 in the back because when I got the bow it's just standing out like that I really want the bow to just barely move forward because when I loosen my hand up on this bow here it'll, it'll go it'll tilt forward a little faster than I want it to so I'm gonna do another video when I put my uh, my system on here. Like I said, I'm gonna put a, a system on here. I may go with uh, uh, I may go with the Tetra 
system. They have a Tetra system coming out. Uh, my brother, uh, Chris Ham, uh, they told me they're coming out with another system. I'm sorry, they're coming out with a stabilizer system in about 30 days. And I may go ahead and go with that. They have like an 8 inch, a 6 inch, and a 10 inch kit in the kit. They have two different uh, styles where you can adjust their stabilizer and then they have one where it's just fixed. And they're really, they're really cool looking. So I'm, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, try, Chris. I'm gonna try to be as patient as I can, brother, uh, and wait. And if I do decide to get the CBE, I still, I'm still gonna get yours uh, and try it out later on. A, it might be my verdicts. It might be this. I don't know. But I'm definitely gonna try it. But like I said, this Tetra site, you can't beat it because when I transferred this site to this particular bow, all I did was just uh adjust it i just adjusted it here and adjusted my uh my windage here i didn't even have to worry about my dial I left my dial alone that's the best way to actually adjust your sight is just adjust it where you uh, where you got your little notches at and then just go ahead and cinch them down and you'll be ready to go but uh once again matthews made a home run uh they they hit a home run with this particular bow here and some guys were like oh man this bow it's this bow ain't no different from the, the VXR is no different from the, the Vertex. It's no different from the Hayline. That's your opinion. But I guess I've been shooting the bow since 84. And I could tell that there's some little small minute things on what I'm looking for. Because like I said, I like to look for a bow that's going to be whisper quiet. I, I don't like to add a whole lot of things to my bow. Um, as I, I, I uh, mentioned in the past, I don't want a lot of bells and whistles on my bow because when I'm in that stand, I don't want to have to look down and see if anything is loose or anything like that. So I keep it as simple as this uh, set up right here. It, it doesn't get no simpler than this. I don't put the, I don't use wrist straps or anything like that because I know how to hold my bow. I know I'm not going to drop it out of the tree because I've been shooting too long to drop it out of the tree. I know anything can happen, but um, I just been shooting so long. I've probably been shooting longer than some of you guys been alive, but um, I really love this VIC. This uh, V, I almost call it a VXR. This V331. Uh, I think this is the Vertex uh, Part 3. I mean, if they got the V3 on here, I think it's the Vertex Part 3. And I don't know if they're going to come out with another V next year. They might just do a whole uh, new brand. Um, I think it's a good idea just to start fresh and uh, come out with something totally different than the cross center cams uh, I think they need to come out with another single cam bow uh, to be honest with you just to see um, how it's gonna go but like I said it's hard to beat this cross center cam it's very efficient and I've never had one come out of tune so that's one cool thing I like about it but looking at the riser once again they made it thinner and the bow was even lighter so um, I'm, I'm done rambling um, I give uh, I give Matthews two thumbs up. We gotta put the thumbs up there. Give him two thumbs up, and uh, you, you just can't beat this bow. It's just the ultimate hunting machine. I thought the Verdix was the ultimate hunting machine. I, the the Verdix used to be my favorite bow. Now the V331 is my favorite bow. But I'm keeping my Verdix, and this is gonna be the brother, sister, or brother and brother. I don't know what it's gonna be, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep that Verdix. I just gotta keep it. That's that's a sweet bow. And I'm planning on keeping this V331 as well. So let me go ahead and take a shot, a couple of shots, and let you guys listen to the sound of this bow. And then I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. And, uh... Okay, one other thing I want to add. This is a little special uh, tip for you guys. One thing I want to add... Uh, about this V3, it could be the 27 or the 31. Uh, if you look at the vein, if you look at the vein clearance versus the uh, roller guard here, what I did, I actually turned, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I took my, uh, I took my veins, because normally I, I shoot with two veins down. What I did, I took and turned just turned my uh, my knock just turned it a little bit so my actual uh, my vein will be tilted down it'll be tilted down away from the uh, roller guard because I shot it with the strip with the two veins straight down and I shot it 
with the two with one vein turned like that. I just barely turned it to actually get the vein away from the roller guard. So when I shot it with the veins, both veins straight down, the arrow it it, it hit the uh, roller guard just a little bit and threw the arrow off. So don't always assume that there's something wrong with your rest. Uh, don't always assume it's something wrong with your form. Uh, make sure. Uh, your actual vein is not hitting the roller guard and that'll solve a lot of your problems on these V331s where when you're shooting it and your arrow just go to the left it'll actually go to the right most of the time because if it hit that vein it's gonna turn the arrow that way it's gonna go that way so if you cock that knock and you cock those if you cock that right vein if you shoot with two veins down if you cock that right vein down some more getting a little bit more clearance you'd be surprised how uh, straight your arrow go and that'll solve all your headaches and you take it back to the shop I, I, I saw one guy take the bow back to the uh, to the uh, to the archery shop and he he was just tearing that left that right vein bottom vein up it just was, it was black and I looked at his bow. I said, you mind if I look at your bow? He said, sure. And then when he put the arrow on there, I told him, I said, that's your problem right there. It's the, it's the roller guard. Some, some veins can get away with uh, having both veins down because the veins are smaller than these, the standard blazer veins. Uh, but I caught my vein down just to get away from that roller guard just to uh, prevent from having such a headache. All right, I'm done rambling. Iceman signing out. Man, sweet, 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 sweet. All right, I'll be talking to you guys in uh, 2021 hunting season because all of our hunts, we're going to actually video the hunts and we're going to put them on YouTube. And I'm also put them on the IcemanSeries.com. That's www.theicemanseries.com. And one thing I want to add is, is uh, since uh, March of 2020, it's just been awful with a lot of people dying. Uh, getting sick from this uh, pandemic. I mean, personally, I don't believe uh, Corona is the cause of death of most of them. I'm not saying Corona is not out there because I believe it's something out there and and that's that's killing these people. But um, you have to get to know Christ as your personal savior because He is the only one that can keep you in this pandemic. Man can't keep you, but God can. And I pray that everybody. Uh, that has a, a, a loved one that they lost I pray that they have peace and comfort and, uh, and, and understanding and I also pray that everybody that don't have a home don't have food, don't have uh, transportation that, uh, they lost it uh, because of the pandemic I pray that God restore it all back to you but like I said, you have to know Christ as your personal Savior. And all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You, you can be saved. But uh, please repent. Uh, you definitely have to repent before you um, uh, get saved. And continue to repent even after you get saved because Christianity is a daily struggle when it comes to uh, the enemy because the enemy lives here on this earth and he constantly attack you and he constantly try to deter you from your destiny but anyway um, that's all you have to do is just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead live a godly life and, and don't be a taker be a giver if you be a giver you will always be, be blessed and that's like the Bible says God he will bless those that bless the poor alright Iceman signing out God bless you.